Good morning, everyone. I'm Dave Caserza, Embedded Computing Architect with Elma Electronic. Uh, today I'm going to talk about a modern yet traditional approach to embedded computing design. To start, I'm going to turn the clock back 30 years to 1989. Uh, the reason I picked that is that's about when I first learned about VME myself. Um, at that time, to build the VME system uh, was a lot of work for the user. They needed to buy a lot of different parts uh, to integrate into their system, and they often had to buy all these parts from a whole bunch of different suppliers. So it was a big process to place all those orders and then have the staff uh, to build these. They needed to uh, assemble card cages, put power supplies and back planes and fans in, wire them up and test them. And uh, in some cases, some of our older customers used to even have their own shops and fabricate their own metal parts and, and really start at a low level. Uh, once they had the chassis integrated, the integration team would come along and they'd configure boards, load boards and operating systems and check it out. Uh, sometimes the boards were even their own design that they had done custom for themselves. So it was a lot of work in the early days to put a system together. As time went on, uh, being able to purchase an integrated system uh, made the OEM's job a lot easier. At the lower level, uh, they could buy an integrated chassis, so a chassis, backplane, power supply, and fans wired and tested, and then they could load their own boards. Or at a higher level, they could buy a, a completely integrated embedded computing platform, which would be the chassis plus the boards and operating systems and some tests. And what that did is it allowed the OEM to have better production capacity with fewer people because they could take this embedded computing platform out of the box and embed it in their final product. Uh, that really helped the industry grow because uh, the easier uh, use for the end, end user uh, made, the, made the market and everything more credible and more desirable. Um, at this time, the VME and traditional parallel bus compact PCI ecosystems are shrinking. Uh, there's a few reasons for that. The main one is that components are going end of life, and in some cases, board manufacturers don't see sufficient business case going forward to create a replacement, so they'll discontinue a product due to the component obsolescence. Um, that's causing problems for the users, and in some cases, uh, the, uh, some of the suppliers have even gone out of business, and that causes an incredible amount of pain for the customers where they can't buy things anymore. Um, and my second bullet there, some of the reason the VME or compact PCI uh, market demand is going down is because uh, some of the applications are requiring higher performance, and, and the suppliers are building v VPX products and finding it less attractive to continue the old products. So there's a need to uh, come up with some uh, technology refresh type of approaches. A lot of places uh, people are thinking about using VPX. As you know, VPX is making great strides. A lot of the discussions in this conference have to do with VPX. Um, there's a lot of high performance single board computers, FPGAs, GPGPUs, uh, very high bandwidth interconnects, uh, so it is very well suited for rugged applications. But VPX isn't necessarily for everyone and for all applications. Some applications don't need that level of performance, and VPX in some cases can be too expensive for the target application. Um, the other problem that comes up with VPX in some of the applications is the ecosystem of the more modest peripheral boards, just basic function peripheral boards. Um, this backplane shows a topology where uh, it's an older design VPX backplane in 3U, and the intent was to build a more traditional, modest performance system where slot one is a single board computer slot, and then the other slots are basically just like, consider them peripheral slots. So you have PCIe by one 
from slot one to each of the other slots. And the couple problems with this is there are very few VPX single board computers that support this architecture. And then the other is, as I said, there are very few modest performance basic I.O. boards available in VPX. Like if you just need to add a few uh, USB ports or a couple of async serial ports, you typically need to get an XMC, put it on a VPX carrier, and just to add a couple serial ports might cost two or three thousand dollars. And if you multiply that by a bunch of I.O. slots for a modest performing little computer, it's a lot of money. So an, an alternate approach that I'm here to talk about is compact PCI serial. There was some discussion of it yesterday and also earlier on Hendrick's uh, presentation. Um, I think it's a, a good approach to be considered when uh, it suits the needs of the target application. Uh, CPCI serial is typically up to nine slots. Uh, there's possibilities for being more. Uh, oftentimes it's a single mesh I mean, a single star full mesh topology, and there are possibilities of doing hybrid designs using parallel PCI cards with new compact PCI serial cards. Uh, that can be helpful if there's some you know, legacy board that is still available that's difficult to replace uh, in the short term. The compact PCI serial uh, backplane, this, this is one showing a full mesh topology. And the full mesh has to do with the top section, which is the Ethernet portion. Uh, in this case, each of the slots has eight uh, Ethernet ports, and that lets every slot have a direct link to every other slot. So if you have, a, say, a, an application with multiple processors that are loosely coupled over Ethernet, this will get you there for connecting the boards to one another. If uh, some of you remember when PICMIG 2.16 was first introduced, it was the first place where uh, Ethernet routing was embedded within a Eurocard backplane. It was found to be very useful. Um, that same Ethernet connectivity in a backplane is extremely popular and powerful in VPX, and it's also carried forward here in uh, compact PCI serial. The other sections of the backplane have to do with PCIe routing from the system slot to the other slots, uh, SATA and USB. So you can either have uh, multiple loosely coupled processors, or you can have a processor with a bunch of peripherals, or even a combination of both. Um, there are quite a few CPCI serial boards on the market today. These are some uh, single board computers, and as I mentioned, several of the more basic I.O. functions that you don't find in VPX, USB, serial, uh, just a very basic, slow digital I.O. for controlling things. Um, there are GPUs and, and some video boards and things like that as well. There are also carrier cards, so if you don't find the function you need, you can use a PCIe card or mini PCIe cards as peripheral cards. The chassis, uh, these you recognize because CPCI serial is a Euro card, so these chassis look familiar to most folks. Um, because it's Euro card, these same types of chassis are used for BPX, VME, and, and parallel CPCI, the traditional CPCI. The components in the chassis are common, extrusions, card guides, so it's possible to build all different shapes and sizes relatively easy, easily using the mechanical ecosystem that exists. These are some of the CPCI serial suppliers. Uh, Henrik uh, indicated there were actually more than this. These are just a few that I put up, but uh, this shows you that you know, there, is, there is a number of different suppliers out there. There are a number of different suppliers out there, and this is handy and basically good for the market for a couple of reasons, because you have competition, but also in coming up with a solution to a requirement, it's possible to pick boards from different suppliers and mix and match to come up with the recipe you need. So the uh, message I have regarding the theme of the, of the, the meeting is, of the future is now is when I go back and look when FutureBus was introduced back in, what, 1990-ish maybe, uh, the word was VME's going away, FutureBus is here. Well, that didn't happen. Then when Compact PCI was introduced a few years later, 
there was the same message. VME's going away. Well, it didn't happen. And what's good for the industry was not only didn't it go away, but CPCI and VME both grew very substantially for a number of years together. The market really expanded for the whole Eurocard industry. So at this time, I'm telling you, VME's going away. But, <laughs> but it's going away slowly. Uh, Elma still produces a lot of VME products for legacy programs. We see some programs doing tech refreshes to put in newer processor boards, like some of the presentations here talked about yesterday and today, although others are looking to do a tech refresh and move to something else. And uh, we're seeing very few new designs using VME or the classic CPCI. And the message here is where VPX is overkill, not the right fit, too much horsepower, too much expense, and more modest systems are needed. The, uh, the use of compact PCI serial is a good choice and should be considered. It's been very strong in Europe. It's just, uh, it doesn't have the same momentum going in the US, but I think the timing is right, and I think now's the time to consider it where it's appropriate.